So, so where did we get this idea that science has to be done by professional scientists? So here's a bunch of people that made great contributions to science as amateurs. Top left there you see uh, Gregor Mendel discovering the loss of her inheritance by playing around with the, the peas in his garden. Darwin did a couple of really great experiments in his bathtub. He was trying to figure out how plants get from continent to continent. So he took some seeds from plants, put them in salt water in the bathtub, and showed that they would still germinate after a couple months. So one day his son came up to him and said, what if a bird eats a seed, flies over the ocean, drops in the water? So they took a dead bird, put a dead bird in the, in the their, their tub, and showed that the seeds were still viable after one or two months, showing that Darwin had a really patient wife. <laughs> so that's all good old-fashioned biology. Now what about this like modern molecular biology, tinkering with genes, things like that? Don't you need like expensive equipment and dangerous chemicals and lots of people in white lab coats? Well, maybe not. I mean, this is a real renaissance going on right now. People that are taking sort of the right to do science in their own hands, do-it-yourself biology, DIY bio. Uh, and there's all kind of people coming up with really cool approaches and alternatives to, to like this expensive stuff that you find in professional laboratories. Things like this little gadget here, it's called a dermal fuse. You can actually 3D print this, you put it in a dremel handheld uh, power tool, spin it up to 3,000 3, RPM, and it's a centrifuge, right? Uh, there's, there's all kind of equipment that people have been developing lately. An open PCR machine, this is a polymerase chain reaction machine, it's essentially a DNA copier. So these two guys came up with a totally open hardware designed for this. You can download the designs, build your own, or they'll sell, sell you a kit if you prefer to do it that way. Any webcam or any camera phone that people are carrying around right now can be turned into a, a microscope. So these, this uh, team at UC Davis came up with this idea of putting this little one millimeter little spherical lens in front of an iPhone and it becomes a very high powerful uh, microscope. Uh, lab reagents turns out just with uh, laxative and Epsom salts, you can insert DNA into E. coli, right? That's how you press your patients in an amateur. So you start seeing like amateur scientists like uh, uh, Kath Al Garvey here. Uh, sort of Irish biohacker extraordinaire setting up his own lab in his, in his spare room and you see his little uh, pressure cooker there, that's his autoclave to sterilize things. Uh, a little closer to home, this is the lab that uh, Josh Lunder and Eric Gentry set up in Mountain View. They were doing real cancer research there in the garage that they stuffed with equipment from biotech companies that were going out of business. <laughs> so, if this looks familiar to you, then this is the, the picture of the Hewlett and Packard garage, their workbench, that they set up around 30, uh, 1939. This was the birthplace of Silicon Valley. It's these thinkers and garages that really have brought Silicon Valley to where we are right now. Uh, so Ari and friends eventually sort of outgrew their garage lab and set up this hackerspace for biotech called BioCurious, uh, funded by Kickstarter initially. So now we actually have a community lab, 2400 square foot facility, uh, with lab space that's available for use by membership. And we're teaching classes. A popular one is inserting uh, genes from jellyfish into E. coli and making the E. coli glow. And we're teaching kids as young as seven here uh, that just come in with their parents who want to learn something. Uh, we've got a couple of community projects running. We're taking a, an old inkjet uh, printer and using it to print biomaterials. And this is the kind of technology that companies like Organovo are developing to be able to 3D print human tissues and human organs. Uh, we're also playing around with bioluminescent bacteria. We want to build a, a bioluminescent uh, night lamp, glow in the dark. Um, so there's these, all these biotech hackerspaces right now springing up all around the country. Uh, there's another example here, Genspace in New York. Uh, they're actually launching weather balloons to take samples of bacteria at the edge of space essentially, see what lives over there. Me, I want to take one of those amps, our sampling devices and put it on top of my car and actually drive the neighbor around the neighborhood, sequence what bacteria are in the air in the neighborhood, and then map that back to Google Maps, right? <laughs> <laughs> so biology is really the science of the 21st century. And we're really going uh, through a real revolution here for the past four years, really. DNA sequencing technology is the fastest developing technology in the history of mankind. Two or three years from now, we'll have enough capacity to sequence every newborn in the US. And it will be so cheap that doctors will be demanding it 
if only just to cover their own asses. Right? Uh, so come join the revolution. Check us out at Biocurious online or come visit the Sunnydale. We're open every day. Uh, or maybe set up your own garage lab, maybe sequence one of your own genes. Uh, screw the gene patents, they're your own genes, right? So take them back. <laughs>